The Sony ZV E10 is a great camera for live streaming, and for a lot of people, they'll have bought this camera exactly for that. And what's great about live streaming with this camera is that the functionality is built in, so you don't need to use a capture card. Unfortunately, this process isn't quite as straightforward as you would like, and it's not just plug and play and it works straight away, though it is still pretty simple. The ZV E10 streams over USB using a USB C cable, which comes with the camera. This lets you use your camera as a webcam and also as a microphone. The USB cable carries the audio and video source from your camera to your computer and also provides the power. This is great, means you're not relying on a battery, which is clearly going to run out if you've got the camera on for that long, and also you don't need to use a dummy battery, which would be connected to your power outlet. So great to do everything all in one go without needing to buy anything extra. Streaming with your ZV E10, you need to activate USB streaming mode. Unfortunately, this isn't active automatically. To do this, you just go to the menu, and then on the second tab, which is called Movie 1, USB streaming option should just be there. So what you have to do is you have to select that, which will activate USB streaming mode, then connect your USB cable to your computer, and then you're good to go. Unfortunately, you have to press this button every time you want to use USB streaming. So if you've powered off the camera and then powered it on again, you will have to remove the USB cable, enable USB streaming, and then plug the cable back in again. I'm not sure why they've made this such a fiddly process because you should just be able to leave the camera where it is all the time, especially if you're going to be using this camera primarily for live streaming and you're not going to be moving it around. But unfortunately, you do have to activate this from the menu each time. Now, there is one thing that you can do to make this process a little bit more simple, which is changing the USB streaming button to a custom button. So instead of having to go into the menu each time and click through what was that a couple of options to get to that, you can set the USB streaming just to one of the buttons on the top of the camera. And to set up a custom button, you just need to go to Menu, Camera Settings 2, which is Tab 2 at the top, then Page 8 on there. Now there should be two options here. The top one is for Photo, and the second one is for Video. So you need to set this up on the second option, which is Custom Key Video, which you can see from the little video icon next to it. Then choose first which button you'd like to set the functionality to. So a good one I recommend is the Shallow Depth of Field button, which is on the top of the camera, easy to reach. And then you just need to select the USB streaming option as for what functionality that key will have. USB streaming is on the 10th page of options, just to narrow it down a bit, because there is a lot of options that you can choose. So if you've got other functionality which you would like to use a custom button with, of course, you can change that here. When your camera is set up and in position, ready for live streaming, you can just press that button first and then plug in your USB cable and you're ready to go. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, you do need to unplug and plug in your USB-C cable every time you want to do this. If there is a way around this, I haven't found it yet and I can't find anyone who's found it on the internet, so please let me know if you have, but hopefully that will be fixed in a later firmware update. But that is essentially it for setting up this camera for live streaming. As I said, it is pretty simple. Unfortunately, not quite as simple as it should be, but still, compared to older cameras where you have to use a capture card, as in they don't have a built-in streaming functionality at all, it is considerably easier than it is with those older cameras. And when you are streaming with the Sony ZV E10, you are streaming at 720p. So no, it's not 4K, and no, it's not even 1080p. It's 720p, so it's HD, but the lowest resolution HD you can expect. Now, if you're just going to be using this footage for Zoom calls, conference calls, things like that, or streaming on Twitch where your, cam your face cam is just going to be in the corner of the screen, then I would say it is perfectly good quality. But if you are after the absolute highest quality possible, then unfortunately streaming with this method isn't going to get the highest quality. It also caps out at 30 frames per second in the NTSC region and 25 frames per second in the PAL region. You can't have higher frame rates than that while live streaming. It also records 48 kilohertz, two channel, 16 bit audio. So that is perfectly fine. You won't need to be worrying about that. And if you're enjoying this video and want to see other videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're enjoying this one, please drop a like on the video. So now we're all set up, the camera is connected to your computer, you'll be able to find the camera on your computer in whatever software you are using for streaming or conference call software, stuff like that. So if you're using Zoom or OBS, the camera will be discoverable in both of these. So to set up the ZV E10 as a webcam using OBS, you just go to here, to add a new source and then choose video capture device. Now we'll call this ZV E10, which is the name of the camera, and then click OK. 
and then have an option to add the camera. It should just come up as ZV-E10. And there you can see the camera is now added. Currently I'm using a different audio source, so we'll also add the camera as an audio source, which you need to do separately. So if you do audio input capture, and then we'll just call this mic, for example, and then it should come up as microphone ZV-E10 to use here. Then click OK. Then you'll start using the onboard microphone from the camera as your audio device in OBS. And to do the same in Zoom, you just go to the settings wheel and the ZV-E10 should be in your camera settings there. Microphone, ZV-E10 there, and you can test, you can see there the audio level from the microphone. I'm really straightforward and for me I've been perfectly happy with the 720p. I mainly use it for video calls, I'm not much of a live streamer though, that has been a plan for a while to use it for that, but for video calls in particular I think it looks great and it is a million times better than any cheap webcam you're likely to find. But if this quality doesn't cut it for you then you are going to need to use a separate capture card. So the downside to this is that it takes more time to set up and it is also another product which you need to buy. But if you are after 1080p or even 4K streaming, then this is the route you're going to have to go down. Now, the most famous option is the Camlink by Elgato, which does provide 4K, but you are looking at spending around $100 with this. Now, thankfully, in the last year or so, there has been lots of cheap capture cards coming to the market. Now, most of these are 1080p, but I'm sure there's some 4K options out there as well. So now I've made a video here looking at loads of options of cheap capture cards and exactly how to set that up. So if that process is closer to what you're going to need, then check out that video. There are loads of cheap capture card options out there. The one I'm using in that video costs around $30, but since then some, are at, some have come out for as little as $10. Now I can't guarantee that the quality of these ones will be as good as the Elgato Camlink, but for a tenth of the price, I think they're definitely worth looking at if you're on a budget. And that video will tell you exactly what you need to buy and the settings that you need to use to get set up streaming with a capture card. Whether that is on the Sony ZV-E10 or an older camera such as the Sony A5100 or the Sony A6000 which don't necessarily have USB streaming built in. Or if they do, it's not as good as the USB-C streaming that you get with the ZV-E10. I would recommend if you've already got the Sony ZV-E10 and you're on a budget, then just give the USB streaming a go. It's been perfectly fine for me. It's considerably less hassle in the setup process and I think the quality is fine. But other things you do need to bear in mind while USB streaming with the ZV-E10 is the age-old problem that you get with Sony Alpha cameras which is overheating. Now the good news in this regard is that I only started experiencing overheating with this camera after about five hours of continuous streaming, which I think for most people is absolutely fine. And even after that five hours, it didn't shut down. I just started getting the warning that the camera was beginning to overheat. However, if you are gonna be streaming like video game content on Twitch, five hours might not be long enough. Some people stream for a long, longer than that. So worth bearing in mind, obviously, Everyone's experience with this isn't going to be the same, but I thought I would point it out that yes, this camera does start to overheat when streaming by USB-C, even if it is after a long time. Also a frustration is that when you have the USB-C cable connected and you want to use the monitor of the camera in forward facing mode, that the positioning of the USB cable covers up most of the screen. So if you're going to be monitoring yourself primarily through this screen, bear in mind that a lot of it is going to be obscured by the USB cable. Frustrating that this is the, how the positioning has worked out with this camera. If it had been a flip up screen like a lot of the older ones would, it would have avoided this problem, but it is something worth bearing in mind. But a plus point is that if you don't like the sound of the onboard microphone on this camera, which is decent but not the best, if you connect any microphone via the camera's microphone port, it will automatically use that audio rather than the built in microphones. You don't need to change any settings to set this up. So that does help speed things up. You're not messing around in the settings. It's not like you're going to accidentally still record using the onboard microphones. So this is a big plus if you want to speed up your workflow. It's just one less thing to worry about. But that's it from me. Just a quick setup guide with a few examples of what the live streaming looks like. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.